Well, Craig, recently we've seen a large upsurge in the number of companies that are looking for case management-based solutions. Why do you suppose that is? There's a big gap in the way we've managed process in the past. Uh, if you look at the trends, uh, globalization and application of BPM and other technologies, we've essentially automated a lot of processes. And there's a continual um, upward trend towards automation. There's been, been going on for decades, but will continue. But one of the results of that, one of the impacts of that is that uh, there are fewer workers. And those workers that remain have a wider uh, diversity of tasks for which traditional training doesn't really cut it. So the, what case management does, it really allows uh, a better context for that employee to be able to manage uh, those, that diversity of task and that process variation. Um, and it really, it really provides them the um, ability to uh, manage the process themselves in a much more directed way than traditional automation that came through either automation through a packaged application or through a traditional BPM um, solution that really tried to lock down an employee's activity. Uh, I like to say keep them at high RPMs. But as a result, it restricted their ability to solve problems. And today, with this trend towards fewer workers having to do more, they need that innovation ability. They need to provide a much stronger customer experience by being able to innovate. And that's what case management really provides. So that's a huge pain point. That's a, that's a global trend kind of pain point. The others um, are really the sort of typical ones in any um, sort of IT infrastructure that uh, tends to be based on fragile systems of records and packaged applications for which the ability to make changes to those systems to meet new customer demands and new employee demands is pretty limited. It's just expensive. So case management has come in as uh, essentially an agility layer uh, on top of those systems, uh, allowing points of entry uh, that can be easily, more easily modified uh, via having configurable business rules, uh, having configurable, uh, configurable templates for cu customer communications, basically moving those things that tend to change a lot um, out of those core systems and packaged apps and moving them into a more product-centric layer, which many organizations are building with DCM solutions. What are customers wanting today that they can't get in packaged solutions that they think they can find in case management-based solutions? The primary thing they are getting is more business agility. Um, the things that are in a lot of these packaged applications really are changing quite rapidly as customers are moving more towards mobile channels where you're needing more contextual information about the customer to treat them the right way in the right channel. Uh, business rules are changing really rapidly. Um, these are all elements that changing them in the packaged application is an expensive process. Um, so the case management solutions have been built, have been designed uh, to really create rules to do things that are um, <clears throat> you know, in, in essentially an alien environment. So they're, they're really built to be agile. They're designed to be agile because you don't know what, you know, a case management solution doesn't give you anything until you apply it <clears throat> to a particular use case. So they're inherently much more agile and more flexible um, than in the core system and application. So uh, recently we've seen more analytics and reporting move to um, the case management layer. So for example, if you're a global firm and want some kind of global uh, reporting, um, you might have an option to upgrade your SAP or other packaged app solution to provide more integrated reporting. And that might be a very expensive, excuse me, that will be a very expensive proposition. Um, alternatively, you could take a look at the analytics and reporting uh, the business intelligence tools that are embedded in that case management application and say, you know what, I'll just use the good interface capabilities, the API sets, I'll be able to draw the information from multiple instances of that packaged application, I'll do my reporting in the DCM layer. Similarly with customer communications, you know, why have the templates for uh, your communications with a customer, why have them embedded in the packaged application? They weren't designed for communications, right? So the rules for when to communicate, the templates for communication, better to lift them out and put them into the uh, uh, case management layer, which is inherently more agile.
So we've been fighting this for a while. I mean, it's, uh, it's amazing today when you think about it that our, our data shows about 80% of uh, an IT budget is being spent on upgrades and maintenance to packaged applications. And yet companies have a tremendous need you know, to move to the age of the customer, to build mobile solutions, to deal with new social channels. They can't possibly have enough budget to innovate um, you know, with that constraint. So what we're seeing is a, uh, a, a decrease in the investment in those systems of records, in those packaged applications, and more investment in uh, solution layers like case management and others um, that really provide that touch point with the customer, that provide a way to build apps, build apps quickly, uh, to really meet the age of the customer requirements. Okay, so if 80% of an IT budget can be spent on maintaining these applications, it almost makes economic sense just to consider replacing those with case management based solutions. I don't believe so. Um, companies need a uh, valid uh, source of truth for their core business which is going to be in system of record. It's going to be in a policy and admin system. It's going to be in a core banking platform. You don't want to think of case management as replacing um, that core system. That's just not, um, that's not going to happen. What you are going to see is uh, there might be specific functionality in that packaged application that makes sense to move to the more agile case management solution layer. And those were the things we've been talking about in terms of business rules, customer communications, client reporting, um, uh, maybe some mobile interaction uh, you know, maybe, you know, with uh, the client, um, your workflow and business process management process work should not be in that packaged application. It should be in this more orchestration layer of case management. But I wouldn't think about one replacing the other. I think that it's a complement to give that agility boost to customers that have invested in their core system. Okay, so it could be an extension to that core, adding more value to the organization. Correct. Good. Packaged applications have been designed by organizations with very specific business requirements in mind. How can users be assured that if they select a case management-based solution, it's going to be based on best practices? That's an interesting and, and, and a bit of a complex question, so I'll, I'll, I'll attack it this way. Um, you have really two alternatives. In, in looking at a specific use case and trying to solve it from a process standpoint. Um, you can either go with the solution specialist, um, and that specialist might have uh, really know the domain, uh, really have you know, built the exact workflow into their environment. Um, and in some cases, that's the best solution. Um, other scenarios, um, you may want to bring in a case management platform and then do a little bit more work, but essentially build the needs of that business, uh, that use case, on the more agile environment. So the question is, how do you choose between the two? Uh, and this is a, 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 uh, a longer answer, but I'll give you the short version. The short version is that the solution specialist wins in certain areas. If you look at the, uh, we, we define three areas of case management, investigative, um, service request and incident management. Those are the three use case buckets and there are hundreds of use cases within each one. If you take incident management, one of the areas, sub areas, is uh, legal, legal casework. Uh, now, in 90% of the cases, a solution specialist that's, that, that does matter management for legal is going to be the selected provider. <clears throat> There's just too much domain, too, too much special requirements Similarly, if it's an incident manage, if it's incident management as opposed to investigative, um, and you look at cyber security, uh, there certainly is a big leg up for uh, a company that understands the forensics of uh, searching through you know IP vulnerabilities to understand where a security hack might have occurred. You don't want to try to build that capability within a horizontal case management platform. It's just too much work. However, where you have high process variation. You know, where you have um, a lot of customization potential, of course, customization is always to be kept at the minimum, um, and where you have complexity of business rules, um, you, you definitely want to look at the case management platform and it will win. Uh, 
So if you take the service request area, which is the brightest area for, for the horizontal platforms, and you look at the pre-sales part of service request, which would include onboarding, um, onboarding is done differently by almost every firm. There's a tremendous amount of data integration and customization and so forth. You want a case management platform for that. You don't want to have solution specialists. Um, other areas uh, have similar characteristics that really fa you know, favor the, um, you know, the case management platform. The key one being process variability. You, know, you get agility from the uh, case management platform, whereas the solution specialists tend to have hardened workflow, hardened business rules, and they just weren't built to um, uh, incorporate um, alien processes the way the DCM uh, platform has been built. So you, you get some interesting differences. Where it becomes even more challenging is that a lot of the solution specialists um, are you know, enhancing their core capabilities to become more generalized, to be able to go across the area that may, they may have built their business on. Um, the case management providers, on the other hand, are building solution frameworks um, for things like wealth management, things like contract management, you know, that um, give uh, you that 80 or 85 percent of a solution. So um, it's a bit of a confused C from a market standpoint, but there are really about 10 or 11 uh, what I call agility boosters that you can look through uh, to see whether to use a solution specialist or whether to use a case management platform. And I'm sure you'll have fun doing it. Okay, Craig, in the advice that you give to companies, mm -hmm. what are the very common pain points that you find that lend themselves ideally toward case management solutions? Um, if you look across all the companies I talk to on case management, which are, are quite a few, and they cross all industries, so pharmaceutical, oil and gas, um, most in financial services, insurance companies within that, investment management within that, um, the, the, the common problem that they're, they're trying to get to is how do I give the right balance of control and process structure to my workers? How do I make that worker feel good about coming into work and not just feel like they're sort of a robotic unit, uh, unit on some assembly line uh, that's dealing with some task? You know, it's very important to have the right attitude for your workers. It's been proven over and over again that uh, positive attitudes create good behavior at work and satisfied customers. So, um, you know, a pain point is how do I achieve that balance? You know, how do I want to, you know, I want to drive them through certain processes, perhaps in a very structured way due to compliance. And by the way, compliance continues to be a huge pain point and it's getting worse for companies. So when you look at compliance reporting, um, it's, it's uh, you know, it's a mess at companies. They don't know how to, um, to meet the deadlines that they're continually uh, to loom. There's a very strong emphasis on transparency in financial operations. Um, they, they don't know, you know, they, they sort of knew, know how to do it in the older uh, ways that were more paper-based and analog-based. Um, so they have a, a very uh, rigid type of uh, compliance reporting. But now, with the explosion in multi-channel and the, the explosion in the age of the customer, um, the, the, the new products and services are accelerating at such a rate, how do they achieve compliance in, in, in a very positive way? In case management, with all its good reporting and its uh, ability to produce output and to, and to produce processes, one way of looking at that. So you have a compliance pain point that's definitely strong. You have this balance issue. Uh, so I want to drive the worker through a very structured set of tasks at certain, certain points, but I want that user to be able to uh, make runtime decisions. You know, I want to, you know, reassign this case to someone else. I want to spend some time searching for information. Um, I want to be, have all of the activities that I've done in the past 10 days, I want to have that made automatically into a um, aggregated um, you know, capability that just becomes a feature on my case management you know, um, uh, user view. Um, you know, I want to be able to um, you know, uh, create a mini process that I can uh, send to Jake or to Bill you know, to complete on a particular task. That's what we think of as runtime flexibility. And that balance is difficult to achieve. You also have the pain point of so many different information platforms at these companies, so many applications to access, um, that it becomes a swivel chair type approach for, for many workers. Um, so cases being used to 
smooth over, you know, where you have multiple, multiple applications. So for example, if you're in a packaged application for 90% of the time, you know, use the workflow tools within that application. That's probably the, that's probably the right solution. But if your information worker is accessing multiple diverse applications, then you want a solution layer, a point of entry that is really good at accessing that information, knows what to do with it, can create kind of a, a metadata layer uh, to be able to visualize the data and, and pr provide it in new contextual ways. So that's a real pain point that, that uh, companies have that, that this is solving. Mainly uh, the one that I think is uh, the, the, the primary driver in the industry is just being able to move more flexibility into an environment that developers and the business can make changes to. And we've seen over and over again that packaged apps just haven't gotten there with that. Uh, many of the uh, systems of records that are um, you know, proprietarily or built by companies internally, um, you know, they, they just weren't designed or architected to allow um, the level of change that's required today in today's fast-moving world. So the biggest problem uh, that companies have, in addition to balancing you know, that runtime and design time capability, um, is, is really just moving agility for creating new reports, agility for changing the process framework, you know, for changing. You know, one of the things about CASE is that uh, as opposed to BPM, um, CASE works uh, in terms of state transitions. So you're transitioning from one state to another through a life cycle. Uh, BPM tends to work task to task with a process map being the primary uh, view into the system. So um, the beauty of CASE solving a tremendous pain point that companies has is that the context of the customer, the information that the internal worker is seeing can change from state to state. And that's the dynamic aspect of it. You know, you have the connections made to all the different seven or eight applications. The view that the case worker has um, you can see the data elements change, the unstructured content change, the links change, you know, what the tasks available to the user are, the reports that they can see and generate, the functions that they can do to, uh, uh, to innovate on the process. That will change from state to state in a very dynamic way. And that solves a tremendous problem of providing that information context that's critical uh, today because we don't have the time um, or the capability to really train workers that come in, we have to provide them this sort of virtual education or virtual intelligence, and case management is really hitting that pain point. Great. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure.